Hello everybody, this is back again on the video. Oh boy, oh boy, my tennis friends all around the world, we have the first Grand Slam tournament of the year. We have the first major tournament of the year, who is just around the corner, is just a couple of days away where the first Grand Slam tournament of the year will start and we all know we tennis lovers, we tennis maniacs, we know where the first Grand Slam tournament of the year will start and of course it is in Australia, it is in Melbourne and the draw has came, has come out, my tennis fans all on the road, the draw is out. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it has not been easy for me to take my teeth into this draw. It has been super difficult. I have, I just actually came from work. I just came from work and I digged in my teeth into the draw and I was seeing, I was watching, I was analyzing. Uh, man, I, I think I watched the draw one hour, one, one, and a, one and a half hour, just to analyze it and try to pick my favorites. And you know, guys, you who follow my channel and who has followed my channel for many years, I do a top eight favorite list from the eighth spot to the first spot. The number one spot is the player I believe the most will win the event. And the number eight spot is the player I believe the least will win the event, but he is he also can win it. All the eight players I will have in my list, I believe in all eight of them, but uh, as higher you are in the list, as more I believe in that specific player to win the event. All right, guys, without any further ado, let's get into this top eight favorite list. On my eighth place, I have the quarterfinal specialist the Mr. Quarterfinalist Specialist and the player I'm talking about is Andre Rublev. He is on my number 8 spot. He is on my 8th place. I believe Andre Rublev has all the chances to make it to a quarterfinal. He has, make to, he has been in quarterfinals before in majors. He has never been past the quarterfinals and I don't believe he'll do, he will do it here either, but I believe he can make it to the quarterfinal and I have him on my eighth place and we have a blockbuster first round match. My tennis friends all on the road, that is a popcorn match and that match I'm talking about is between Rublev and Dominic Thiem. We all know Dominic Thiem is not in the shape of his life, but he's a former Grand Slam champion. He won the US Open back in 2020. And they will clash against each other in the first round. That is probably the most, most hyped first round match. Uh, at least for me, it is the most hyped first round match. They had to add this, I believe, 4-2 to uh, Andrew Rublev. He has won four consecutive matches against Dominic Thiem. So I, I will have Rublev coming through there, but it will not be easy. Dominic Thiem, man, you cannot count him out. It is still Dominic Thiem. He can hit the ball huge. From forehand, backhand, uh, he's not in the shape of his life, but it will be a test. Rublev will be tested immediately. Anyway, Rublev has Dominic in the first round. Then Rublev can face uh, Rusevori in the second, uh, and Evans in the third, and in the fourth he can face Kyrgios or Holger Rune. Of course, Holger Rune can defeat under Rublev. He defeated him in the Paris Masters a couple of months ago, Holger Rune and Rublev, but I think that in a best of five format match, I will give my edge to Andre Rublev. But I will not be shocked if Holger Rune defeats Andre Rublev, if Holger Rune wins three matches, uh, which is not a certain, which is not sure that, I'm not sure that he will do. But anyway, I believe that Rublev will make it to a quarterfinal. I have him on my eighth place. On my seventh place, I have Taylor Fritz. The American who played his first ever Grand Slam quarterfinal last year in uh, Wimbledon, where he, drew, when he, where he came short, barely short, against Rafa Nadal and lost an epic 5 set battle. That was his first ever Grand Slam quarterfinal for Taylor Fritz. Uh, and I believe he can make it to, a, to, a, to his second quarterfinal appearance in a Grand Slam tournament, Taylor Fritz. Uh, he has shown some great results lately. He won the United Cup with United States. 
and he won some matches there. So uh, Taylor Fritz should do damage here in Australia. He has a big forehand, big back, and big serve. He's not a speed demon on the court, uh, so he's not lighting fast. But these co these courts are all really fast. So players with great offensive skills like Taylor Fritz obviously have. He, they, th those players will get rewarded. So I think that Taylor Fritz, he should do a good run here. So I have him on seventh place. He has a tricky first round opponent in Bashashvili. We all know that Bashashvili, he's a really, he's a shot maker. He can beat more or less everybody, but he can also lose more or less to everybody. So uh, Taylor Fritz should sh should watch out in that first round. But if he Survive us against Bashashvili, which I believe he will do. Then Taylor Fritz, I think, can do a run. In the second round, he can face Popperin. We all know Popperin, who's from Australia, uh, who has big serve, big forehand. Uh, he's not the most consistent player on the tour. Uh, he's unbelievable inconsistent, but he can make some noise. He can do an upset here in Australia. He can take out Taylor, but I believe in Taylor more. So he can. Taylor can face Popper in the second round. Uh, then Kashmanovic, Taylor can face in the third round. And then in the fourth, Taylor can face Zverev or Diego Schwartzman. And we all know that neither Zverev, neither Diego Schwartzman, uh, they have not been great. They have not been showing great results uh, uh, as of late. Uh, Zverev, just, he's just coming, he's just coming, he's just... He's coming back from injury after not playing tennis for six, seven months since he, you know, had that terrible injury in in Roland Garros in the semifinal against Nadal. And since he has done his comeback, he has not been super good to be to say the least. And Diego Schwartzman, this this course are too fast. He has too too horrible of a serve. So I don't think Diego Schwartzman will even win three matches to be quite honest. But anyway, Diego is in that path. So. I believe Taylor Fritz can make a noise and a run here. So I have him on seventh place. On my sixth place, I have Cam Nori. Cam Nori. Not many, pop, not, not many people talk about Cam Nori. He just goes a little under the radar. He defeated Rafa Nadal uh, in, the, the, in the United Cup for the first time in his career. Uh, so Cam Nori, I believe, can make a... He can make a noise here in Australia, to be quite honest. Uh, he... he not many people talk about him. He has uh, a good serve, good lefty forehand, decent flat backhand, solid mover. He's not the greatest mover, but he's solid. Uh, good hands on the net. Uh, doesn't do many up for steros, so he usually doesn't beat himself. You need to beat him, so I think Cam Nori can make it to a quarterfinal. Uh, he played the semifinal. Uh, last year in Wimbledon, uh, Cam Nori and took a set from Djokovic, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Cam Nori. Uh, I don't know if he, I don't know if he took a set. I don't remember. But uh, uh, Cam Nori, he, he was at, in, in the semi-final last year uh, at Wimbledon. So Cam Nori. So I believe that Cam Nori can make a noise here. So I have, I have Cam Nori on the sixth place. And in the, in, the, in the first round, he will face a dude I've never heard about, Van Asche from France. Never heard about the dude. That is his first round opponent. In the second round, he can face Montero uh, or Lestiene. Montero from Brazil, Lestiene from uh, France. That is, the, that is Cam Nori, potential second round opponents. Uh, third round, he can face Choric. Uh, uh, and in the fourth round, he can face uh, Stan the man if Stan wins three matches, uh, which I highly doubt that Stan will win three, but I believe that Stan can do it. You never know, Stan is a shot maker. Of course, Stan is in decline, but it is still Stan the man, a three times Grand Slam champion, so he can face Stan the man in the fourth round, potential Cam Nori. Uh, he can face Felix Elasime. Of course, Felix can defeat Cam Nori and make it to the quarterfinal instead of Cam Nori. But I believe Cam, I believe in Cam Nori more than Felix Elasime this time around. But you never know. So Cam Nori can face in the fourth round. Stand the man, Felix Elasime. Uh, pfft, 
all those all the players that Cam Nori can face. Uh, so I have Cam Nori in the sixth place. All right, uh, on the fifth place, the highest quarterfinal candidate. We are now in the highest quarterfinal candidate, huh? because the first three quarterfinal candidates are on the eighth place, Andrew Rublev. On the seventh place, Taylor Fritz. On the sixth place. Cam Nori. Now we are on the fifth place, the highest quarterfinal candidate. And the highest quarterfinal candidate, my tennis fans all around the world, I have Daniel Medvedev. Yeah, Daniel Medvedev has played two consecutive Astel Open finals. He was in Astel Open final in 2021, lost against Djokovic in three sets, three straight sets. And then he was in the Astel Open final last year, 2022, lost an epic five set battle against Rafa Nadal. I don't think Daniel Medvedev will make it to his third consecutive Aslo Open final. Can he do it? Absolutely he can. Uh, historically, he, he, has played, he has been showing good results in Australia. Obviously, he has played two Aslo Open finals. But I just believe that Daniel Medvedev is not that good of a tennis player to make it to three Aslo Open consecutive finals. That is my feeling. Yeah, he has a great backhand, especially his cross court backhand is good. His forehand is not that, not, it's not a superior shot, to be quite honest. His serve is really good, especially on these lighting fast courts. He will get rewarded a lot with his serve. Daniel Medvedev's weakness is slow surfaces. That's why he will never win French Open. We all know that. Uh, so, and that's why his only Grand Slam title has come in a, in a hard court Grand Slam, which is obviously US Open back in 2021. So, Arsenal Open, historically, he has shown good results. And he can make it to a third consecutive Arsenal Final. I will not be shocked if he did that. Absolutely not. Especially because he gets so rewarded. He gets rewarded with his serve. His passivity doesn't show much on these lighting fast courts because uh, he his, he gets rewarded with, with his offensive skills. He doesn't have huge offensive skills, according to me. He doesn't have. Uh, but he, his, his transition game is not the greatest out there. He cannot go from defense to offense really quick. But on this lighting, lighting court surface, he can do that. He can do that. He cannot hurt Dan Medvedev as much on these lighting, lighting fast courts like you can do on slow surfaces. Because his, his serve, he, he holds his serve so many times on, on fast surfaces. It is hard breaking him in fast surfaces. And he has decent returns. So if he breaks your serve, the set can basically be over. So that's why he's super dangerous on fast surfaces. That's why I believe he can make it to a final. I will not be shocked. But I don't have him making it to a final. I have him on a fifth place. I believe he will go to a quarterfinal and lose there. On his first round of opponent, he will face Giron. Uh, Giron, uh, American dude. So, uh, I, I don't think he should be too much trouble from Giron, to be quite honest. Uh, Dan Medvedev. Uh, so, that will, not, that will not be too much of a trouble, Giron. In the second round, he can face Milman. Uh, Milman, a baseline, solid Australian player who is really... Difficult to handle, to be quite honest. He doesn't beat himself, Milman. He can run for a whole day. He just is a baseline, consistent player who doesn't do much on uh, So So Milman can be a tricky opponent for Milman, for Medvedev. Uh, Milman will not give the victory away for free to Medvedev. So Medvedev needs to beat Milman. But Medvedev has a bigger serve than Milman. So, and Medvedev has better returns than Milman. So I think that Medvedev will win that serve, uh, serve return battle and will win against Milman in the end, if Milman wins the first round, which I believe he will do, but you'll never know. In the third round, Medvedev, there you have Medvedev's first test, first big test, Sebastian Korda. We all know what happened what Sebastian Korda did in Adelaide, the, the first tournament, because Adelaide is having two tournaments. Uh, he was one point away of defeating Djokovic in the final. And he was taking all the time away from Djokovic. He was doing big damage against Djokovic, especially with his backhand. With his forehand as well, but mostly, mostly times with his backhand. He was challenging Djokovic 
with the, you know, that backhand exchanges. Not many players can challenge Djokovic with backhand exchanges cross court. There, it is their Djokovic has the most advantage against majority, if not all the players out there. Nobody can handle Djokovic on the cross court backhand exchanges. Korda did that superbly in that Adelaide final, especially in the first set, where maybe Korda actually even out. Not outmatched, but topped to Djokovic in the backhand exchanges. But in the second and third round, in the second and third set, then Djokovic started to take his teeth into Korda's backhand side. But and Korda can challenge Medvedev's Medvedev in the backhand cross court exchanges. So Korda will be a test for Medvedev in the third round, I believe. I will not be shocked if Korda upset Medvedev. I will not be shocked, not at all. You know what? We will see upsets, guys. The question, the, mile, the million dollar question is, where, was, where will we see those upsets? If we knew that, if I knew that, I would be a rich man. I would bet money to win a lot of money. You don't know that. But that third round match between Medvedev and Korda is an upset alert. Korda can upset Medvedev. He can do. He has improved his serve, Korda. He has improved his physicality, Korda. He, he's, he doesn't get tired on the court like he used to do two, three years ago. His backhand is superior, Cordas. His returns are solid. He can challenge Medvedev from the baseline. But I just feel that Medvedev in Australia is not easy to defeat. So I will go with Medvedev in, the third round, in that third round clash. But I have an upset alert for that match between Korda and Medvedev. All right, that is an upset alert. If Korda takes out Medvedev, I will not be shocked. I will not even be surprised. But anyway, I have Medvedev coming through in that uh, in that match between Med between Korda and Medvedev. If, if Korda wins two matches, because you never know, you never know with these players to do great run before a huge tournament like Korda did in Adelaide, uh, and then they can lose early in the in the Grand Slam tournament. Medvedev, I don't believe he will lose his first two round matches. I don't believe. Medvedev will be in the third round. Anyway, Medvedev has a difficult test against Korda if Korda makes it to the third round. And then in the fourth, Medvedev can face Hurkacz. Uh, uh, he can face Hurkacz. He can face Denis Shapovalov. Uh, I don't think that Denis Shapovalov is a huge threat to Medvedev, to be quite, on, to be quite honest. Uh, so. Uh, No, not 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 no, not not Denis Shapovalov. No, I'm sorry. Medvedev can face in the fourth round Hurkacz. He can face yeah Denis Shapovalov. Yeah, I'm sorry. Denis Shapovalov is also there if Shap if, if Denis wins three matches, which I highly doubt it. Denis has a first tricky a first tricky round opponent in uh, Lajovic. Uh, Lajovic is always dangerous. So anyway, Medvedev can face Hurkacz, Denis Shapovalov in the fourth round. Uh, Sonego is also there, so uh, anyway, there you have Medvedev's path to a quarterfinal. So Medvedev is my fifth place. Now we are in the semifinal spots, my tennis fans all around the world. We are in the fourth, on my fourth spot. We are. I'm done with the quarterfinal candidates, eight to five. Now we are in the semifinal candidates, which is number fourth place. My fourth place, I have. Casper Ruud, the second seed in the tournament. Casper Ruud, uh, it is maybe time to take Casper Ruud seriously. After all, he played big four big final last year. We all know he lost all of them, and he was not even close to winning any of them. He lost the Miami final against Alcaraz last year in straight sets. He lost the French Open final against Nadal last year in straight sets. He lost in the US Open final against Alcaraz in four sets, but that one was not one-sided. He actually had one set point in the third set. So if he would have won that third set against Alcaraz in that US Open final, who knows what would have happened. So that was not one-sided like his first two big finals was in Miami Open final against Alcaraz and the Grand Slam and the Roland Garros final against Nadal. At least he gave Alcaraz a run for his money in that US Open final. And then he played his four big final uh, against uh, Novak Djokovic in that ATP 2 finals in Turin and lost in straight sets. So 
He's not a big match player, to say the least. When, he has, when he's going in these big finals, he's losing them pretty convincingly. But he's doing the, the, the deep runs. So, and he's, a, he's the second seed. And he has shown some tremendous good uh, development in his game, especially his backhand. He has improved his backhand. He has an underrated serve. He has a great forehand. Not, not a murderous good forehand because he gets a lot of credit for his forehand. Uh, he's not, he doesn't have a forehand like Titi Pass, like Nadal, like Federer. Uh, Federer has retired, but when Federer was playing, uh, even Djokovic's forehand is actually bigger than Root, according to me. Djokovic's forehand doesn't get a lot of praise. Djokovic's forehand, this man, it is, it is a huge shot. It is a much bigger shot than people think. Especially when it comes to consistency, Djokovic's forehand is so consistent, man. Especially his depth, especially his cross-court forehand. Man, Djokovic doesn't get a lot of praise for his forehand, but Djokovic's forehand is, is money, my tennis friends, all over the world. So, Rude is not on that list in, in forehand, but Rude lives on with his forehand and with his serve. Uh, and he has improved his back. And so I think Rude can make it to the semifinal. Uh, so I have him in fourth place, uh, Kasper Rude. His first, his first round opponent is a player I've never heard about from, from Czechoslovakia, uh, Machak. If I ever pronounce that name right, I doubt it. Machak. That is his first round opponent. And the second round, he can face Broxby. I don't know, Broxby has not shown some great results of late. And he has not make he has not done some big runs last couple of months. He can face Broxby in the second round or McConnell. Uh, in the third, he can face David Shkovkina, Public, Straff, uh, Tommy Paul. There you have Root's potential third round opponents. Uh, and in the fourth round, Root can face Murray. I doubt it. I don't think Murray will make it to a fourth round. He can face Bertini. There, it is more likely that Rude will face. I think it can. I think it, it will be more likely that Rude will face Bertini in the fourth round. Uh, Fognini is also there. We all know that Fognini is a big decline, so Fognini will all, will never make it to a fourth round. But we all know that Fognini is a shot maker. Uh, Kokonakis, who plays in his home country, is also there and can be a potential fourth round opponent for Rude. But I don't. I don't think. Most likely it is that Rude will face Bertin in the fourth round. So there you have Rude's path to a potential quarterfinal. And eventually semifinal. Obviously, I believe that Rude will go to semifinal because I have him on my fourth place. So now we are in my biggest spots. And the biggest spots is from third, second, and first. Uh, guys, the place I have third, second, and first is always the players I believe the most in that will win the title. All right, obviously because they are the highest. And the, the third, the third spot is also semifinal, semifinalist, but obviously is a higher than the fourth spot because I believe that the player who is in third spot has more chances of winning his semifinal match than the player who is in, who is in the fourth spot. And the player I have on the third spot as a semi-finalist is Rafa Nadal. Maybe some of you will get shocked here. Inter, what are you doing? Rafa Nadal has won only one match since US Open last year. He has lost six out of his last seven matches that he has played. Are you nuts? Inter, you who know tennis and will watch this game for 30 years, how can you have Nadal this high? I get it, I respect you who think I'm crazy. But Rafael Nadal is a, 20, is a 22 times Grand Slam champion. Rafael Nadal is the defending champion as well open. Rafael Nadal is the number one seed. Rafael Nadal is not finished yet. Rafael Nadal for sure has six losses out of his seven last matches that he has played but majority of those matches they have been in indoor matches indoor hardcore matches and all of those not all six five of those matches that he has lost because he has lost six 
out of his last seven matches that he has played. Five of these of, of this matches that he has lost has been in three sets matches. Not five sets matches. The only five set match he has lost out of his six matches, the last seven matches that he has played, is that against Francis Tiafo in the US Open in the fourth round. So, and Rafa Nadal, he will not go down easy. He, people are not afraid of him like before. He's 36 years old. He's not in his peak of his career. I know that. He doesn't have the best serve. His serve is not even top 10 in the world. I don't believe... He, I, I doubt it if, if, even if it is top 20 in the world at the current moment. But for sure not top 10 in the world. But he still has that forehand. He still has that winner mentality. He still has that stamina. He still has, he still has that physicality. He still has that... No, don't... He still has that... Never give up attitude. He still is... He will fight like his life is on the line out there. He will not... He will not go down easy. He will not lose easy. So I have him on my third place. I have. I believe he will go to a semi-final. On his first round, he will face Jack Draper. Yeah, Jack Draper is a really dangerous first on opponent, the 21 years old young gun who plays, who, who has a big forehand, big serve, he's a lefty. Nadal and Drake, Draper has never faced each other, but I think Nadal will penetrate Jack Draper's one single-handed backhand. I believe Dra Dra Jack Draper has a one single-handed backhand. I think Nadal will penetrate that, sh that side, and I think Nadal will come through in the end. I think so. Jack Draper is playing Adelaide 2. He's on the semi-final at the current moment. Jack Draper will be, maybe will be a little tired when the main event as Open will start. And Nadal will... I don't, think, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but I don't think Nadal will go out against Jack Draper. I don't think so. It can happen. I will not be shocked. But I have Nadal coming through there. Nadal has Jack Draper in the first round. Then he has Nakashima in the second round. Nakashima is also dangerous. We all know that. Uh, but I don't think Nadal loses to Nakashima either. To be quite honest, my tennis fans all over the world. Or McDonald. McDonald is also can also be uh, Rafa's uh, second round opponent. In the third round, Nadal can face Nishioka. Nishioka, we all know that he's a really solid baseline player who doesn't do many unforced So Nishioka can be a potential third round opponent for Nadal. And then in the fourth round, Nadal can face Tiafo again, like he did in US Open last year. So... Uh, or Kashanov. Kashanov is also a potential fourth round opponent for Nadal. Uh, but uh, I don't. I, to be quite honest, I don't see Nadal's fourth round opponent really, really dangerous. Yeah, Tiafo can be dangerous, but I don't think Tiafo beats Nadal two consecutive times. I don't think so. Nadal's biggest dangerous are in the, fir the first couple of rounds. If Nadal survives the first week. If Nadal survives against Draper, if Nadal survives against uh, Nakashima, uh, who is both of the, both of the, both of those two guys are really dangerous opponents for Nadal, then Nadal can make it can make a deep run in Australian Open. He can do that. I believe he, he can make it to a semifinal. I truly believe so. So I have Nadal on the third round. Maybe I'm crazy, but I have him. I have him. I have him on my third place. On my second place, I have Stefan Tsitsipas. Tsitsipas is a three times. Astral Open semi-finalist, and I believe that Tsitsipas has a great draw. I have looked his draw. He really should took it. He really should take advantage of this draw. He's the third seed, and he really should do damage with this kind of a draw that Tsitsipas has. Uh, Halis, a France dude in the first round, he can face them. He Hikiata, second round, a player I've never heard about, or Huffman. Uh, that should not be big, big dangers for, for Tsitsipas. He can face those two guys in the second round after Halis. In the third round, Tsitsipas can face uh, Van Desch Dench. His, his first seeded player is Van Desch Dench, if I, if, if I even am pronouncing his name right. Van de Jansch. Van de Jansch. Uh, or Grispor in the third round. He has Grispor. Griskespor in the third round. A, Potential third round opponent as well. Uh, and then Ivashka is also there looming as a potential third round opponent for Tsitsipas. In the fourth round, he can face Yannick Sinner, 
a Kyle Edmond. I I don't think Kyle Edmond will beat will will, will not beat Yannick Sinner, but Tsitsipas has a as a potential fourth round opponent. He has Yannick Sinner, or maybe Muset is also there. Uh, Choric is also there. Uh, Fusovic is also there as a potential fourth round ma opponent for Titi Pass, but most likely I believe that it will be Choric or Sinner as potential fourth round opponent for, for Stefan Titi Pass. I don't know, I have a feeling that Titi Pass can make a run here. Historically, he has played good in Astral Open. He has three Astral Open semi finals uh, in the past, Stefan Titi Pass, and I believe that. Maybe it is time for Tsitsipas now to make it to his first ever Astral Open final after three times coming short in, se in semi-finals. And I'm liking his draw. So I have Stefan Tsitsipas as my number second, as, as, on my, as my number two in my top eight favorite list. And at my number one place, guys, you know it by now, it is not any surprise, it is Novak Djokovic, the nine times Astral Open champion, the player who has won this tournament in three consecutive years, 2009, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2019, 2020, 2021. He has won this tournament in three consecutive years. Uh, he was banned to not play last year. We all know what happened. I will not even go into that. He has not lost in Australia in 34 matches. Uh, he has won, if we count all the ATP Cup and Adelaide and Astral Open tournaments, he has not lost in 30. He has 34 consecutive wins in Australia. He has won 30 matches out of his last 31 matches that he has played, going back to Wimbledon last year. The only loss he has in the last six, seven months is against Holy Rune in that Paris Masters final last year. He is the overwhelming favorite. I know he has some kind of a scare hamstring issues in his leg or thigh or whatever it is. I don't think that is too dangerous. I really don't think. If that was the case, he would not have played over three hours against Sebastian Korda in that Adelaide final last week. So, I have Novak Djokovic on my, one, on my number one spot. I believe he's the man to beat. And I know that majority of tennis analysts in the world has the same. And it is pretty obviously why we have it. You will be crazy if you don't if you don't have him as a num uh, number one spot. And I do, I'm liking his draw. Carbelas in the first round. That will not be too much of a trouble for Djokovic. Delian in the second round, possibly Delian in the second round. That will not be too much of a trouble for Djokovic either. Uh, so, I'm liking his draw, Novak Djokovic draw. I really am liking his draw. So, Carbelas in the first round, like I said, uh, Delam possibly in the second round, or Kasud, whatever that player's name is, if I'm even pronouncing it right, Kasud from France. Uh, and then a potential fourth round opponent, Dimitrov is there, Jere, Karach Karachev. Potential third round opponent, Dimitrov, Jere, Karachev. But Karachev, he has been on a big vacation the last one and a half years. He has not done much. Uh, and potential fourth round opponent for Djokovic is Karina Busta. PCB. PCB is always dangerous. He has a solid cross court backhand. He's solid from the baseline. PCB can trouble Djokovic. We all know that. Uh, but I don't think that PCB will take out Djokovic in a potential fourth round match if PCB even wins three matches. Isner is, is also there, but I, I'm not trusting that Isner will win three matches. Diminaur is there. Diminaur is more likely that will win three matches and face potential, potential Djokovic in the fourth round. So, there we have Djokovic's first couple of uh, potential opponents. So, I have Djokovic on the number one spot. And the quarterfinal matches, I believe, will be between Novak Djokovic and... Uh, Andre uh, Andre Rublev. Uh, let's start from top section of the draw. 
the first the quarterfinal match, I believe it is Nadal bet, between it, it will be with Nadal versus Medvedev. Nadal is leading Medvedev 5 1 in the head to head. I will favor Nadal in, in a potential quarterfinal match between Nadal and Medvedev. If Nadal survives the first round, like I said, then it will be super dangerous in the, in the second week. Nadal's big danger is in the first round. So I have Nadal as facing Medvedev in the quarterfinal and then Tsitsipas facing Nori in the, in the, in the second quarterfinal. I, I have Tsitsipas coming through uh, Nori and the third quarterfinal is between Djokovic and Rublev. I have Djokovic coming through against Rublev in the third quarterfinal. The fourth quarterfinal I have between Rude and Fritz. I have Rude coming through against Fritz in the fourth quarterfinal. The semifinals is between Nadal and Tsitsipas. Here I believe that Tsitsipas will take Nadal. I don't know, Nadal has a 7-2 head-to-head favor against Tsitsipas, but I have a feeling that Tsitsipas, it is, is it, last time they played at Astral Open was 2021, and Tsitsipas came back after being down, two sets to love down, and he came back and won the match in five sets, so I believe that Nadal, this late in his career, 36 years old, I will give my slightest edge to Tsitsipas, if Tsitsipas makes it to, to that semi-final, and Nadal also makes it to that semi-final, I have a feeling that Tsitsipas can take out Nadal in the semi-final. That is my first semi-final match between Nadal and Tsitsipas, and I have Tsitsipas beating Nadal. The other semi-final match is between Djokovic and Ruud. I have Djokovic beating Ruud in that second semi-final. And then the Aslopo final, I believe, will be between Novak Djokovic and Stefan Tsitsipas. And I have Djokovic beating Stefan Tsitsipas. And I have Djokovic winning his 22nd Grand Slam title and his 10th are slow Astral Open title. So there you have guys the Astral Open draw preview and there you have my top eight favorite list some dark horses Andy Murray, Stan Wawrinka and why not uh, Brooksby. Brooksby can also be a dark, dark horse. There you have three dark horses. Alright guys I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did give it a thumbs up subscribe see you next time. Peace.